Hello, teacher. Hello, good evening. So, um, today is the last day of this uh, of this course. Uh, we are ending uh, today, so we are just going to end with all the information and that we have left about the quantifiers. But uh, we are going to say goodbye today. So we are going to start with the session because we have just one hour to um, to work with the information. So we are going to start um, and then we are going to um, wait for the others to come to the session. Uh, but we are going to start right now because it is at the last session today. So yesterday we were talking about quantifiers and we were uh, giving some explanation about um, the different uh, words that we have uh, when we are talking about quantifiers and also we were uh, seeing that uh, we have a specific use for that word or the quantifiers uh, when we are talking about um, uh, count and uncount nouns. So in that case, we were talking about uh, the different uh, types of words that we are going to use for um, these quantifiers. So now we are going to um, end the information that we have about the quantifiers. I have um, some examples about the words uh, that we are using uh, with the quantifiers. And also I have a list of quantifiers that you have to keep into mind. But we're going to uh, end this part with uh, the last uh, thing that we were saying about that topic. Um, and yesterday we were talking about uh, the group, the members of a group. That was uh, the last thing that we were saying about the quantifier, that is this one, members of a group. So in this case, we were talking about that uh, when we are talking about uh, members in a group in general. So in that case, we are going to use um, a general uh, group of things, so group of people that we are going to talk about. And we have the examples, a few snakes are dangerous. In that case, we were talking about snakes, uh, a whole group of snakes, and we are not saying this kind of a snake, this kind of a snake. In that case, we are just talking about a snake. Then we have the second example, and it says most children like chocolate. In that case, we were talking about children. In this case, we're not talking about uh, just girls, just boys, the age, or something like that. We are just talking about uh, children. And then uh, we have, I never have enough money. And we were talking about um, all the the kind of money that we can have. In this case, we are not talking about dollars. We are not talking about a genes. We are not talking about oneness and all of the things. We are just talking about money. And we are not talking about um, coins or bills in that case. So we are just using a group. Así que en esta parte solo estábamos usando grupos en específico donde no íbamos a hacer nuestra... Eh, no vamos a hacer como una separación de las cosas. En este caso solo estamos hablando de grupos en general. Eh, no estamos como generalizando. Eh, that's the word because it sounds kind of eh, weird. Estamos haciendo solo un ejemplo. En este caso en el de las eh, culebras. Que decíamos que un par, o sea, pocas eh, culebras eran peligrosas. No estamos especificando qué tipo de, de culebras pueden ser, ya sea pitón, ya sea eh, mamba, ya sea... Eh, sabemos que tenemos un montón de, de tipos diferentes de, eh, de culebras. Pero en este caso solo uh, generalizamos el nombre ¿verdad? de las culebras. 
So now we have, but if we are talking about members of a specific group, we use of the as well. So in that case, we are talking about like a specific group. In that case, it's like um, we are going to use just a, a small group of uh, that general group. Para esta otra parte eh, es hablar ya de un grupo en general. O sea, I mean, de un grupo en específico que nosotros ya tengamos como delimitado. That's the word. So we have the examples. And we have in the number one, few of the snakes in the zoo are dangerous. Few of the snakes, I mean. So in this case, we are using this one. The snakes in this zoo. That is the, um, the change in the sentence that is telling me that I have a specific group. I am not talking about um, all the snakes in the world. I am talking about the snakes in the zoo. So that's my group. Then we have another example and it says, most of the boys at my school play football. In this case, we are talking about boys. We are not talking about children. Uh, we are uh, talking about boys in a specific school. Next one, he's spent, he has spent all of the money that we gave him. The money that we gave him. So in this case, we are talking about the money that uh, we give to that person. So he has like a specific amount of money and he spent all of that money that he, that he has in that specific moment. And then the last one, it says, both of the chairs of my, in my office are broken. So in that case, we are talking about the chairs in the office, not about all the chairs in the world. So in this case, we're just talking about the chairs in the office. And it says, note uh, that we all and both, we don't need to use of. We can say all that and both that. Podemos notar en estos en estos dos, and all and both, this one. That is not necessary to use of. We are writing of because in some cases we use that uh, word um, when we are talking, but in this case, it is not necessary to add the of with the uh, sentence because in that case, we are just uh, using uh, the. Así que no es necesario que utilicemos of con all y con, y con both. Eh, porque pasamos directamente a la oración. Then we have both, either, and, and neither. <clears throat> and it says, if we are talking about two people or things, we use the quantifiers both, 
either and neither. So in this case, when we are talking about um, two people or two things, we are going to use these quantifiers. And we have the examples. Then we are going to talk about supermarkets. In this case, we are going to use one supermarket, two supermarkets, and more than two to create these examples. So in the first one, we have one supermarket. Then we have two supermarkets. More than two supermarkets. And we have the expression. The supermarket was closed. And for the two supermarkets, we say both the supermarkets were closed. And for more than two, all the supermarkets were closed. Then we have the second one and it says, the supermarket wasn't open. And when we have two supermarkets, we say, neither of the supermarkets was open. It's like to say ninguno in that case. And then we have a non of the supermarket. We're open. And then we have, I don't think the supermarket was, was open. The next one said, I don't think either of the supermarkets was, was open. And the last one, I don't think any of the supermarkets were open. So in that case, it says that a note that nouns with both have a plural verb 
but nouns with either and neither have a singular verb. Eh, si nos fijamos en la parte donde tenemos dos supermercados, eh, cuando usamos neither en either eh, no utilizamos el where. Estamos hablando de dos supermercados, pero en este caso no estamos usando eh, where, eh, porque no, en este caso no lo vamos a tomar como eh, la forma del plural. En este caso lo vamos a tener como un verbo singular. So in that case, we are going to use was for the use of either and, and neither. Then we have every and each. And it says we use the quantifiers every and each with singular nouns to mean all. So in this case, we are using uh, every and each to talk about the whole thing. Entonces, eh, cuando utilizamos el every y el each en este tipo de, de nombres, uh, obviamente los estamos utilizando con singular. Eh, nos estamos refiriendo a todo, pero solo en singular. En este caso no lo vamos a utilizar con el plural. So we have some examples. And we have number one. There was a party in every street. And we can say that there were parties in all the streets. Then we have every shop. Was decorated with flowers. And it means that all the shops were decorated with flowers. Then number three, it says each child was given a prize. And it means that all the children were given a prize or there was a prize in each competition. So there were prizes in all the competitions. And the last one is about the competition. So it means that there were prices in all the competitions. So in other examples, we can see that we are talking about the whole thing. Um, but in this case, we are using just a singular noun, but it doesn't mean that we cannot use all for that uh, noun. 
so uh, in that case we are uh, using it and also we are using like uh every así que estamos hablando de que al tener nombres singulares eh, también podemos utilizar eh, palabras específicas que nos demuestren eh, que estamos hablando de todo el conjunto, como en el primer ejemplo. There was a party in every street. Había una fiesta en cada calle. ¿Qué significa eso? Que habían fiestas en todas las calles de esa zona. Then every shop was decorated with flowers. Eh, todas las... Eh, Tiendas fueron decoradas con flores. Todas, todas las de ese lugar. Then each child was given a prize. Todos los niños tuvieron un premio. And it says we often use every to talk about times like days, week, and year. And years. So, I mean, okay. We have some examples for this one. And the number one said, when we were uh, when we were children, we had holidays as our grandmothers every year. So basically in this sentence, we're saying that eh, cuando éramos eh, niños o pequeños, in that case we can translate it like that, eh, cuando éramos niños, eh, teníamos vacaciones. Eh, en ese caso, podemos decir en la casa de nuestra abuela, todos los años. Then we have number two. When we stayed at my grandmother's house, we went to the beach every day. So in this case, we're saying that um, cuando nos quedábamos en la casa de mi abuela, íbamos a la playa todos los días. And the third one, it says, we visit our daughter every Christmas. So in this case, nosotros visitamos a nuestra hija todas las navidades. And we have here, in which cases we are not going to use the determiners. Or in this case, uh, the word every and each. So in this case, it's saying that, that we are not going to use the determiner with each and every. Remember that at the beginning of this topic, let me go to that part. Let me see, let me see. I think I, I wrote the examples of the determiner here. Well, I don't know if I just said about the determiners when we were uh, talking about this one, I think. It's just like the mention. Yes, in this case, uh, I just mentioned. 
Uh -huh. I just mentioned the words that. Uh -huh. I just said what are the uh, determiners that I have here, and I'm going to um, say the words. So give me a second. So we said um, that we have the determiners that we have some examples for those. Um, we have the and this some either my and whose. So in that case, we are not going to use um, every and each with those words. So we have uh, that, we have and these some either my and whose. So when we have that words, we're not going to use the quantifiers every and each. Then we have two examples. And we have number one that is, uh, we are going to uh, explain or, or, or write the wrong part. And it says every shop was decorated with flowers. That is the sentence. And it, in this case, the wrong part is this one. The every shop. So in that case, if we are going to write it like this, it is not correct. And we have the second one that is that each child was given a prize. And we have the incorporate form, the each child. That is incorrect. So in that case, we have a rather all the information that we have about the quantifiers, but I have some examples that I want to share with you. And in that case, I have uh, the quantifiers, or in that case, if I can say that uh, we have the most common uh, with the Spanish meaning and with an example of uh, that quantifier. So I will give you the quantifier in English, in Spanish, and I have a example for you. So remember that the quantifiers uh, indicate quantity and answer the question how many and how much. Uh, the use of some applies to accountant names, others to uncountable names, and other for both. So we're going to see the most common uh, quantifier. So let me change for this. I think I will do it in a new page here. Because I have uh, three parts in this um, in these examples that I am going to give to you. So we have here. Let me give you this one. I have two, four, six, eight. Okay, I will have more of these ones. So here, what is the first one that we are going to see is much. We have a much and it means, or it's used, um, refers to uncountable ideas in singular. Uncountable ideas in singular. And we have here, again, in English, much, in Spanish, mucho o mucha. Then we have questions. In this case, it's the example. 
And we have how much money do you have? How much money do you have? And in Spanish, we have. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Cuánto dinero tiene? And then I need to write this one. So we have that question. How much money do you have? Then we have positive. And we have the statement. He has much more money than me. He has much more money than me. And in Spanish, it's me and él. Tiene mucho más dinero que yo. Then we have the negative one. And it says, I do not have much money to spend. No tengo mucho dinero para gastar. So now we have many. That is the other one. Many. And it says that this one uh, refers to countable ideas in plural. Countable ideas in plural. So we have here that many means muchos and muchas. Then we have the question and it says, how many cuts does she has. She has. And in Spanish, this means, ¿cuántos gatos tiene ella? Oh, ¿cuántos gatos tiene? That's not necessary to add ella at the end. Then we have positive. And it says, we have many things to do at home. And in Spanish, it means, tenemos muchas cosas que hacer en casa. And we have the last one that is negative. And it says, I do not have many friends. And in Spanish, it means, no tengo muchos amigos. Then we have the other one that is any we have any and it says that um it's used it refers to uncountable and countable ideas in plural this one we can use for both So here we have any that in Spanish means alguno, alguna, algo de. And we have here the question. And it says, 
How many cats does she have? I mean, not in this place, in the next one. Oh, in this case, it's not this one. Do you know? I mean, my mistake. Any of that voice operator? Do you know any of the of those voice? I mean. Over there. Conoces a alguno de esos chicos de allí? Then we have negative, and it says. I don't have any money. And in Spanish, no tengo dinero. So we are going to have to clear. Then we have a sum. And in this case, we are just going to have a positive one, two. Two, and we have, yes, like this. So we have here some, and it says that it is it's used, it refers to uncountable and countable, Ideas again in plural. We can use this um, with both. Again, and we have a sum, algunos, algunas. And we have positive. That is, in this case, we are just going to have positive. And we have a mean. I mean one more. Hey. Okay. We want some sports socks to play. And the second one said, uh, I have some money. And in Spanish, we have, queremos algunas medias deportivas para jugar. And the other one, tengo algo de dinero. So we have four more uh, examples. And now we are with a lot of or lot of. In this one, we have just positive and negative. Like this. Okay, we have lot, a lot of, or we have lot of. And it says that it refers to uncountable and countable ideas. In this case, we're not talking about uh, like singular or plural, just 
countable and uncountable ideas. And we have the meaning a lot of that uh, we can see that they have like um kind of the same the same meaning, but uh, depending on the use that you are giving to them, uh, you have another kind of meanings. And yesterday we were saying that they have another meaning because. You know that in English we have some words that have the same meaning but uh, referring to another thing and others that are referring to the same thing but have a different meaning. So in this case, it's not like they have just one meaning for this. And it says muchos, muchas. And we have the positive. And we have the examples. She has a lot of cars. We have lots of money at home. And in Spanish, it means um, ella tiene muchos carros. And the second one, nosotros tenemos mucho dinero en casa o tenemos mucho dinero en casa. Because it's not necessary to add the uh, pronoun in Spanish. And then we have negative. And it says, he does not have a lot of books. And the second one, I don't have lots of money. This one means, él no tiene muchos libros. And the last one, no tengo mucho dinero. Now we are going to the next one that is a little or a little. In this case, we have question, positive, and that's it. So we have here little or a little. And yesterday we were talking about that one and it says that uh, we are going to use it with uncount nouns. And we have here little or a little, un poco. We have question. And it says, would you like a little milk? ¿Quieres un poco de leche? Then we have a positive. And it says, there is a little cold water in the refrigerator. There's 
a little cold water. And we have another one and it says, I speak a little Italian. And we have in Spanish, hay un poco de agua fría en el refrigerador. And the last one it says, hablo poco italiano. And we have two more uh, for end this part of the quantifiers. We have just two more words. And we have few. In this case, we just have positive. This one, so we have a few here or a few. And these ones are for countable ideas or nouns. And we have here that a few means poco, unos pocos. Then we have a positive. And it says, there are few students today. And the second one, he likes a few rock stones. So in Spanish, this means hay pocos estudiantes hoy. And in the second one, uh, a él le gustan unas pocas canciones de rock. And the last word that we have here is none. That in this case, remember that the, we have like a, a scale in which we have these words from 100% to zero. In this case, none is the last one of the scale that has zero percent. Also with a no, that is, that has almost the same meaning in this case. So we are going to see none. And we have question uh, only. We have a non. And it says that it's used with a countable and uncountable idea. So in this case, we are going to use it with both. And it means ninguno o ninguna. Then we have a question. And we have here, how much money do you need? And the answer is none. In that case, we are using like 
um, like answers. And we have none. And the second one, how many bags are there? None. ¿Cuánto dinero necesitas? En este caso, ninguno. And the second one, ¿cuántas maletas hay? Ninguna. So uh, in that case, we have all the examples uh, of the quantifiers there. So the last thing that we are going to do, because we have just a couple of minutes, is to classify the words into countable nouns, uh, uncountable nouns, and countable and uncountable nouns, because we have the three categories. Solo vamos a hacer la clasificación nada más de las palabras, solo como un repaso recordatorio de las palabras que estamos utilizando como quantifiers. Vamos a poner eh, cuáles van con nombres contables, nombres no contables y los que se utilizan con ambos. So that's, uh, it will be the last thing that we are going to do with this topic and with this course. So we have three and I need, I think, two. I need to move this one and I will write list of quantifiers. And here we have uncountable nouns. This one is a countable noun. And this one, both. So here we have, let me do this. Yes. We have much. We have a little, little, very little. A bit off. A great deal off. A large amount of a large quantity of so there are the quantifiers for the uncountable nouns in this case. Now with countable nouns. We have a large number of then many several few few very few then a great number of A number of a majority of and for both we have the following quantifiers enough 
all, more and more, less and least, not and none, <clears throat> a lot of, plenty of, not any, some, and any. So, uh, there you have all the, I mean, I think there are not all of the quantifiers that we have in English, but we have a great number of quantifiers in that uh, document. So um, I will have this document for a couple of days um, because I don't know. I don't know if you're going to uh, use the document or later. So I will keep the document for a couple of days. Uh, so you can go um, and see all the topics that we were uh, learning in this um, course and in this month. Uh, it will help you to um, improve the information that you have. Maybe you have all of these topics um, because there are not like very complicated topics in this in this course, and uh, there are some basic uh, topics and ideas. But maybe you have, um, but in this case, some, uh, in some of the topics, it's like uh, you are uh, making like a review of the information that you have. And you know that uh, today is the last day of this uh, course. So I hope that you have uh, worked on the platform because you know that the time is over. So, I hope that you have completed all the information, all the exercises that you have in the platform. Uh, because I don't know how many days do you have to complete if you are not doing it um, on time. So, um, so I think it's it's all for this uh, for this course. So I am hoping that you have like a great great uh, process because you are going to continue with this process this is not the first thing that you are going to do you have a lot of things that you are going to perform in the future to learn the uh, the language and you are a very very good student and it was a pleasure for me to be working with you so i wish you luck with this um, english process and have a, a good night and thank you for your time.